please join me in the prayer of the day as printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food, fill all of us that are serving the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our scripture reading. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. God invites Israel to a great feast at which both food and drink are free. God also promises to make an everlasting covenant with all peoples, with promises that previously had been limited to Israel. As David was a witness to the nations, these nations shall now acknowledge the ways in which God has glorified Israel. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a responsive reading of Psalm 119. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all the earth. The Lord upholds all those who fall, and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand, and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways, and loving in all your words. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cries and you save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The second reading is from Romans chapter 9. This begins a new section in Paul's letter in which he will deal with the place of Israel in God's saving plan. He opens by highlighting how Israel's heritage and legacy include being God's children, having God's covenants, being given God's law, participating in worship of God, and receiving divine promises. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accused and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up from heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. If any children of God wish to come forward for a children's message. Good morning. You gonna come up too? You guys got to do something different this week, didn't you? Now, usually we only come to church on Sunday, right? We're only in the building on Sunday, yeah? But what other days were you here this week? Almost all the days. And what day were you here this? You were here on Monday? Yeah? And I saw someone's other. I saw your great-grandma here this week, too. <laughs> yeah? What did we do this week? We had vacation Bible school last week. Yeah? Did you have a fun? Yeah. Yeah? What was your favorite song? The Overflow My Cup song? Like the one with the actions? Or the other one? Uh-huh. Let it overflow? Yeah. That is a fun song. I saw your mom even singing some songs. Did you know that? Yeah? Did she sing songs in the car too? No! I had fun with Vacation Bible School this week too. You know, when we do fun things in church, when lots of different things happen, not just fun things, but other things happen in the church, sometimes it's just worship, other times it's we're helping people out and, or doing something. It takes a lot of people to make things happen. Did you see some people, some grown-ups helping this week? Did you see some grown-ups helping with Vacation Bible School? Yeah? You know, you remember some of their names? Who were some of the grown-ups that helped? Who was here? Who did you remember seeing? Your mom was here, because you were here. Yeah, she helped one day. Who else? I know you know their names. You forgot, you for, you forgot Auntie Deb's name? Yeah, she was here. You forgot who was here. Well, there's other people here in church too, the people who did the newsletter, but they, we didn't see them because they were hiding downstairs. Like the helpers. The helpers, yeah. Who are some of the high school helpers? Uh -huh. Zarin helped? Yeah, Zarin and Lexi helped and lots of them helped. How do we say thank you to people who gave up their time to help out. You don't know, well this is a good one because this children's mes message is really not for you guys. You can certainly do this, but this children's message is for all the older children of God, okay? 
You know who are older children of God? Like your brother and all the other people out there. For all the older children of God. There's lots of people who volunteer. Great ways to say thank you is you can say thank you with their mouths and say it, say the words thank you. Uh, we can say thank you by giving people high fives or giving them hugs. We can say thank you by writing a note to say thank you. You don't want to sit down, do you? No. We can say thank you by being happy and joyful. There's lots of ways to say thank you. But the most important thing is to actually do it. And it's really meaningful. That means it means people. People feel it in the heart if it doesn't just come from little kids. If it comes from grown-ups, too. If grown-ups say, thank you for all the volunteer work. Thank you for helping out. Thank you for, even if you did the smallest thing, I want to say thank you both with my words and both with my actions that we appreciate people. I know you guys can do that, right? You, like, you can, when you see Auntie Deb, you can give her a hug and say thank you. That's pretty easy. Or anyone else that helped out. But that can be really hard when we get older and we're grown-ups. We can forget to do that. So, I want you guys to go back to your seats and then poke your parents and say, can you guys say thank you to the volunteers? Do you think you could poke your parents and say that? Do you think you could poke your great grandma? Okay, I'm, I'm now I'm just offering bad advice and telling them to poke people. All right, go back to your seats. Because the rest of the children's message is to all the older children of God. Sometimes it can be really hard for us as older children of God. We, we are thankful. But we forget to say it. We forget to do it with our actions. It took so many volunteers. The education committee put so much extra work in because no one was in charge this year. In the past, we've had one person in charge who did all the work. But it took so many people this past week. So many different things from those who brought food to those who are present and here and helping out. And so I would encourage you, if you know one of them, to go and say thank you and with your words, maybe even write a thank you card, because it means a lot more when it comes from you older children of God. So a little encouragement for you. And lead by example to show the kids, right? I got a few head shakes, and so I know you guys are Lutheran and very stoic, and not going to show emotions, but it's good to have a, a head shake to say, yes, I'm going to do that. So, thanks for listening to a children's sermon. And from our gospel today, I looked at this up on the internet because I had to find out, I knew some of them, but what do the following cities have in common. So the cities, Las Vegas, Orlando, Dallas, Houston, New York, Philadelphia, Birmingham, San Antonio, Daytona Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Salt Lake City, St. Louis. There are a couple more, but I just, those are the ones I listed. Think for a few seconds of what they might have in common other than having a bigger population than us. What make those cities have in common? And if you heard the gospel lesson, you might that might give you a clue. Hmm, what do those cities have in common? What they do have in common, and there are some more that could be listed, is all of them ban people from sharing food with the homeless. In different variety of forms, those cities ban people from sharing food with the homeless. The most one I know most is Philadelphia because there's a speaker that I like to follow. And that speaker has been arrested 
for handing out sandwiches to the homeless. You, they put requirements on, like, you need permits to do it. Or if they're handing sandwiches out from a food truck or a, a van, they put all these requirements and conditions. And so there are actually churches who are willing to get arrested because they just want to hand out sandwiches to those who are hungry. There are many children books who uh, involve a story of preparing and sharing food or a lack of sharing food. Uh, maybe you know the story of the little red hen. That's an older one. It tells of a hen who asks for help to bake some bread, but all the other farm animals refuse. When the bread is ready, she asks who wants to help eat it. They all offer, but then she refuses in turn, keeping the fruit of her labor to herself. Another story is stone soup. Uh, it comes in various uh, various ways to tell the story, but perhaps you've read a book called Stone Soup. It involves a traveler convincing people to contribute nourishing ingredients to a magical soup that begins with inedible stones in water. Here, it's a feast that becomes possible when people are tricked into sharing. What stories do we tell about how people are fed? And what lessons do we learn? Jesus prepared a meal for the multitudes to remind us that we feed people not because we believe they deserve it, but because they are hungry. Perhaps we all should go back and read children's stories about sharing food with kindness and generosity without conditions. Perhaps we should just even hear the Bible story. The Gospel today frames the feeding of the 5,000 as an exodus moment to suggest that Jesus' presence and power in the lives of his followers is on par with God's work on behalf of the enslaved Israelites. This feeding event also looks towards the future events of the Last Supper. The Gospel of Matthew states that Jesus took the five loaves of bread and the two fish, looking to the heavens, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and the disciples gave it to the crowds. Likewise, the night before he was betrayed, our Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. This feeding of 5,000 happens in all the Gospels. So that means it is of great significance and importance to Jesus to feed them. The good news for us is Jesus, in hearing the death of his cousin John the Baptist, the one who helped begin his ministry in his baptism. Jesus, who wanted to withdraw from the crowds to grieve, saw the crowds, had compassion on them, cured the sick, blessed a few pieces of food that ended up feeding a crowd of people. God empowered Jesus as God's own son to do this miracle. Jesus was exceedingly generous, and for us who belong to God through adoption, we are forever blessed. Psalm 145, verses 16 through 19. The you here is God. You open by your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways, loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, and to all who call upon you faithfully. You desire the, of those who fear you, you hear their cry and save them. This is our good news. And so what does that mean for us? We should have compassion and serve others. I know you people. You know it. You know to have compassion and serve others, and you do it. And 
from Jesus we hear today. When grief wants to overwhelm us, have compassion and serve others. Jesus did stop grieving, but Jesus still had compassion and served others. When those who are in need, who are in need, are needy and unprepared, have compassion and serve others. When the other disciples don't know how this ministry is going to be accomplished, if it will come to fruition, have compassion and serve others. Give generously without terms and conditions, not because they deserve it, but because they are hungry. Jesus forgives our sins, not because we deserve it, but because Jesus loves us. What if we forget about people who deserve and just love, just do, just serve, just be generous? The temptation, though, is a voice of sin trying to tell us, what if they take advantage of us? What if we run out? But do they deserve it? Now, what Jesus would say, so what? Be them. You're not going to be excluded from heaven because you fed too many people or you gave too much. So what? Feed them. Feed them spiritually. Feed them physically. Let us all go out from this building to love and serve our neighbor by feeding them. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us say, sing our uh, hymn of the day, hymn number 689, 689 in the Cranberry Red Hymnal. <laughs>
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Confident that God receives our joys and our concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. You gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love throughout the world. Guide us in the mission of the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourished creatures, and raise up to care for all that you have created. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You desire peace and justice in the world, instill within all political leaders your desire and support the work of international peace organizations. Provide relief for those in war-torn areas. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You comfort those who are hurting. Accompany those who are alone. Heal those who are sick. Provide for all who hunger or thirst. Console the bereaved. Bring joy to the sorrowful. And attend to all who call on you. We lift up to you those listed in our prayers. For Lisa, Sheila, Mark, Roberta, Marilee, Colleen, Noreen, Al, Kathy, Isaac, Arlene, and the family and friends of Lois. Others who are listed, or others who are on our hearts, in our minds, we lift them up to you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all from whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share our peace with our neighbors. Peace to those who continue to worship with us online. Peace be with you.
Uh, the funeral coming up, Lois Diversity Funeral, is for Monday, August 14th at 11. Are there any other announcements I may have missed? Nope, you're all staring at me. That means I can continue going on in the service. Okay, let us stand and receive our offering.
May you be strengthened by the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We lift up this prayer. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As you are able, please stand, hear, receive, and believe this blessing is for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us sing together our sending hymn 484 in the Cranberry Hymnal 484. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.